Hey guys, this is Carl Terry, and we're over here at the Mount Juliet Library, and we're going to do a follow-up to the lesson that we started the other day. Remember we were talking about when we first started the lessons as the COVID first hit? We did these very long lessons, now we're redoing them, cutting down to just bite-sized lessons. So let's start with the man over here on the screen. That is Alfred Wegener, the man, the myth, the legend. This is a guy who really understood geology. However, he might have been a little bit too far ahead of his times. He develops a theory, as we saw last week, called continental drift. But unfortunately, in 1912, that theory of continental drift, while it's true, he was unable to explain the mechanics behind it working. Plus, he had a couple of other things that were working against him. He was a, he was a meteorologist, but he was talking about a theory based upon geology, so he was out of his field. He was German. This is right before World War I, and a lot of things that the Germans said was very, very suspect. Plus, he had his own issues in his personal life that kind of like made things kind of weird. Bottom line is, in 1930, he dies. Whether he died or actually deliberately committed suicide, he would leave the expedition in the middle of the night during a blizzard, knowing full well in all likelihood he was not going to survive. In either case, he passes away in 1930, 30 years before his theory can actually be proven. The problem was that they lacked the technology to prove that his theory was correct. In the 1960s, we developed something that we call the Alvin. No, not the chipmunks, you bozos. We're talking about the Alvin, uh, which is going to be a submersible. A submersible is going to be a two-person sub with the ability to go down to the very bottom of the ocean floor. Once they were actually able to see the bottom of the ocean floor, Two people, Hess and Dietz, were responsible for creating the theory that we now call sea floor spreading. Sea floor spreading simply means that the bottom of the ocean floor in certain parts of the Atlantic, the Pacific, and the Indian Ocean, certain parts of the ocean floor are literally being ripped apart. The plates are moving in different directions. And where they're moving in different directions, underneath is magma that's bubbling up and it's creating brand new land on top of it. See this over here, folks? See those dark ridges? Those are literally mountain chains that are going to be found in different oceans all throughout planet Earth. Those mountain chains are the result of this sea floor spreading theory that we were now able to prove when we had the ability to go down and actually see this at work. Take a look at Iceland. Iceland is a country that is sitting directly on top of a fault. A fault is just going to be the area where two different plates are going to meet with each other. Iceland is sitting on a fault line that's going to separate the Eurasian plate and the North American plate. When those plates move apart, there's going to be volcanic activity that's going to create brand new land. Iceland is often called the land of fire and ice. Ice because of its climate, fire because of the number of volcanic eruptions that are going to be occurring there. Take a look at that last slide. With that last slide, you could see you had a mountain chain, you had a mountain chain. At one time, they were connected. But then when the continent started to move apart because of the seafloor spreading, the end result is the mountains move further and further apart, creating that rift valley that we see in between. Well, how does this actually happen? To understand how that happens, what I want you to do is I want you to go boil a pot of water. I'll wait here. Go ahead, guys. Do, 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 do. Okay, now, when you boil a pot of water, you see that photograph that we have over there? You notice something about the steam? The steam is coming off the center of the boiling water, and it's going up, okay? What that is doing is it's creating in the air a convection current, but in the water itself, it's also creating a convection current. Here's the way a convection current works, guys. Here's your heat source, which is the stove. Now, when you turn on the stove, you're providing heat energy, and over here you've got the interface between the areas where the heat energy is going to be transferred to the water itself. 
Water is made up of hydrogen and oxygen H2O molecules. As these start to get hot, the molecules start to go bouncing around. Ooh, they bounce around a lot, okay? That's called kinetic energy. As they generate more and more kinetic energy, they're going to start to rise. Hot air rises, hot liquid rises as well. As it rises, what's going to happen is it's going to get to the top, it's going to cool off, it's going to spread out. Hot air rises, cool air sinks. The same thing is true with water. So the cooler water is going to sink, go back to the heat source, and this process is going to happen over and over again. This is what we call a convection current. Now let's take this very same idea of a convection current and let's apply it to planet Earth. Over here on planet Earth, your heat source is going to be the outer core. Instead of water boiling, we're going to have magma, liquid rock underneath the surface of planet Earth. This magma is going to move just like the water moved itself. It's going to rise then it's going to spread out, then it's going to sink, and the process is going to happen all over again. Underneath planet Earth, in an area that we call the asthenosphere, this whole process is happening. It's this process of convection currents in the asthenosphere that's going to be responsible for moving the plates. Now notice over here, see the way this convection current is working underneath? Here's plate A, here's plate B, because of the direction of the convection currents on top, plate B is moving in that direction, A is moving in that direction, they are diverging apart from each other. Now let's take a look at C. Because of the convection currents underneath C, B is moving in this direction, C is moving in this direction, those are going to converge. So the fault between A and B are going to be diverging plates, the fault between C and B are going to be converging plates. All of this is the result of convection activity in the asthenosphere. And now this is going to show us exactly what we were just talking about. There's your asthenosphere, there are your convection currents, and notice the heat source is right over there at the outer core. The result of all the plate activity on the surface of planet Earth is the, result of the, is the result of the convection currents that we're going to find in the asthenosphere. Now, I was telling you about the mid-oceanic ridge and how that stuff is moving apart. Let's take a look over here at the Arabian plate and the African plate. Right over there by Saudi Arabia, those plates are moving apart and in between you've got the Red Sea. The Red Sea is what we would call an embryonic ocean, meaning as these plates move further and further apart, the Red Sea is going to get bigger and bigger and bigger till it's going to be the size of an ocean. When's that going to happen? Probably in about 300 million years or so. You might want to jot that down on your calendar. When you've got divergent plate activity, this is going to create mild to moderate earthquake activity. Now, sometimes they're going to collide with each other. When that happens, we call that convergent plates. Where India is now is not where it was millions and millions of years ago. Here's the Asian continent, Here's this, here is the Indian subcontinent. Gradually over the millions and millions of years, India moved closer and closer to the Asian continent, and what happened is where they collided, they literally pushed the land up. That land that got pushed up is what we call the Himalaya Mountains, okay? You see the picture over there of the contents moving further and further? Now take a look at this picture. As you're looking at it from space, you could see where the plates collided, how they created the Himalaya Mountains. Now last week we were talking about the two different kinds of crust, continental and oceanic. We've been talking about continental colliding with continental, that's convergence. That's not too bad. Like I said, mild to moderate earthquakes. However, sometimes, instead of it just being continental to continental, you get oceanic to continental. That's something that's called subduction. When that happens, oh man, that is really, really bad stuff. What happens as a result of that is you get 
severe earthquakes. These severe earthquakes are going to trigger massive tsunamis like we saw in the early part of the 21st century. Or it's going to generate volcanic eruptions. Look at that top slide. It looks like a nuclear bomb is going off. Guess what? A volcanic eruption can release more energy than a nuclear bomb. And perhaps the worst part of the whole thing is it's going to create the ring of fire. So what are we talking about? Earthquakes tsunamis, volcanic eruptions, the ring of fire. Oh my goodness! We're going to see how all this works next week. For the time being, you can go hide under your bed, guys. See you next week.